Mm -hmm. uh, everybody would un undo your or start your video if you would those of you who were on video and we are back on the record in 417-538-03-2020. The court has created breakout rooms, which were invisible, if you will, to the parties in the hearing. And uh, only those members of the breakout rooms were able to maintain their attorney-client privilege. Um, we are back on the record and the court is about to announce my memorandum order from last evening, yesterday afternoon so that we can have the further clarification uh, and discuss the issue of uh, visitation in between today's date and the date of our continuance. All right, memorandum order. The court makes the following findings. The court issues the following temporary orders. The court finds that the children had been with their father for extended summer visitation prior to the first TRO granted by this court. The court now orders that father receive Zoom visits with his children, 15 to 20 minutes each child or an hour with all three kids every day at a time arranged by the parties through their lawyers after work so that no conflict with either parent's schedule occurs. Both parents are ordered not to discuss the litigation or disparage the other parent during these visits. These visits are found to be in the best interest of these children. The verb number two, the verbal order on August 31st, 2020, which temporarily sealed the case, open paren, sealing, backslash, open quote, gag, close quote, order, close paren, was vacated and withdrawn on September 1st, 2020. All parties were emailed this order on September 1st, 2020. Three, the temporary orders heard on August 20th, 2020, enjoin, open paren, prohibited, close paren, Jacob Bellington, to be in the presence of the children subject of this suit. To be clear, the court now orders absolutely no contact with mother's boyfriend, Jacob Bellington, or any other unrelated male to be around these children. Number four. Both parties agreed on record during the August 31st, 2020 hearing to remove all video, audio, and name identification containing the children subject of this suit from all platforms and social media. The court order on August 31st, 2020 did not seek to shut down, control, manage, or seize any account, including GoFundMe, Facebook groups, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, or any other platform. The court order solely sought to protect the children's identity via audio backslash video. Five, the court is presently reviewing all previous records from prior hearings, all pleadings and briefings, as well as the transferred records from Comal County, Texas, cause number C2015-02382, styled in the matter of the marriage of Michael Long and Kelly Long and in the interest of S-A-L-J-L-L -A -L and L-A-L children. Six, all email correspondence relating to pending cases will be filed with the district clerk for inclusion in the record of the case. Any communication to the court or staff via email must comply with rules 21 and 21A Texas Rules of Civil Procedure, and to do so by the fastest means available to the other affected parties or counsel. The provisions of Canon 3B8 of the Code of Judicial Conduct should be carefully reviewed before any person connected with a case attempts any communication with the judge or court personnel. Seven, this case has been set for trial for a trial before the court on November 4th and November 5th, 2020 at 9 a.m. Any other matters in the last TRO will be taken up at the hearing as scheduled on these matters on Thursday, September 3rd, 2020. Signed this second day of September, 2020 by me. So, Ms. Graham and Ms. Lishman and Ms. Shemish, we have a, an SPO based on the last order of parents living over 100 miles apart. 
that is the order that the court is legally permitted to adhere to. That is the last order in place with regard to visitation with the children. Tell me the reasons, um, if you will, for not adhering to that schedule with proper restrictions in place. We have restrictions in place at from the previous judge where boyfriend was an alleged perpetrator was not allowed around the children. We had also restrictions regarding that first visit with mom as ordered by the previous judge sitting in visitation for me that the that I believe that uh, portion of visitation was supervised by the grandmother. And then we are back to no orders regarding visitation except for the original order in place in the final decree, which was, I guess, not modified in the motion to modify, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Yes, that's my understanding, yes. All right. So. Um, to the allegations of whether or not the, um, the exchange will go poorly under proper orders of this court, I believe those can be controlled by the declaration of the attorneys as agents for father that those concerns will not occur at any future exchanges um, on either side, on either side. Um, let it be known that this this judge has not actually had in evidence before me the three videos that were referenced by Ms. Graham. Um, so that is what I'm assuming there will be additional pleadings filed so that we can all be brought up to speed as to what is in the best interest of these children. I will, however, review the evidence, um, and it was already given to me by the court reporter that was substituting in so I will review that before our, our um, extension of the current TRO, which is um, currently modified by my yesterday afternoon rulings. So your honor, my, I don't mean to interrupt, but my client has a, a number of questions. One of them is, is how long are we going to be before we actually have an, a, a, an evidentiary hearing on the case? That's the first question. He is not sure where the children are at this point. He'd like to kind of know where they are. That's the second one. He's concerned about whether or not the minor child of Jake and Kelly is having visitation and whether the kids are present during that visitation. There, those are three concerns that he wanted to address. I think that he wanted to address to the court previously before we had our breakout sessions. Okay, so um, there have been safety issues regarding the location of the uh, parents that require that really both parents locations not be shared. Uh, however, I am 100% certain that this exchange of visitation will go down without any form of all the things that took place um, and that the children will be returned in conjunction with the order that these parties agreed to back in 2017 and was signed in 2020. So July of 2020, um, a lot was different. And, um, but what I'm permitted to, um, I don't even actually know the answers to some of these questions. I, I do believe that the attorneys should review and go over these things by attorney's eyes only because my order will be complied with. That is, these children will not be around Mr. Bellington at all, period. I, it, the other case regarding uh, another child, not the subject of this suit, as the lawyers well know, I am not entitled or privy to that information. Sure. So all three of you as officers of the court and with your duty of honor and truth to the tribunal, know that that answer is not in the possession of this court. So all three of you need to discuss these matters 
between and among yourselves, but until I have a violation of my order with regard to either of these parents, this court is not even entitled to that information. As you know, Ms. Graham. Your Honor, if I may get some clarification from the court at this time. Go ahead. Judge Hawkett entered some temporary orders um, in, with injunctions regarding father not being allowed to take the children to any medical professionals as he had taken the daughter Sophie to over seven medical professionals while she was in his possession, which I believe you'll hear more testimony and evidence at the next hearing, but will those injunctions still remain in place? Um, gosh. And also the child, the child was taken to numerous interviews regarding this. Um, and the judge also ordered that only the Child Advocacy Center of Collin County would be able to do one other forensic interview and that dad was prohibited from taking the child to be interviewed by anyone else regarding this. Can I respond to that, Your Honor? Yes. Okay, so the child was taken to a um, three different places particularly the, the reason that she was taken to three different places was because the child refused to be seen by a, a male physician. So on June 28th, the child was taken to Oak Run Medical Center. She had what they call- Ms. Graham, vol Ms. Graham let, me, let me back you up just because I really do want my own chronology of events. So on June 28th- Sure. The child was taken to Oak Run Texas Med Clinic in New Braunfels. She had she bacteria- from New Braunfels. Mr. Long is wanting to answer, but that's okay. No, um, Ms. Shemesh, do you have the date? I'm looking right now. Okay. That only the Child Advocacy Center of Collin County would be able to do one other forensic interview and that dad was prohibited from taking the child to be interviewed by anyone else regarding this. Can I respond to that, Your Honor? Yes. Okay, so the child was taken to a um, three different places, particularly the, the reason that she was taken to three different places was because the child refused to be seen by a, a male physician. So on June 28th, the child was taken to Oak Run Medical Center she had what they call Graham, vol vol Ms. Graham, let me let me back you up just because I really do want my own chronology of events. So on June 28th, sure. The child was taken to Oak Run Texas Med Clinic in New Braunfels. She had she bacteria from New Braunfels. Excuse me. Why would anyone move from New Braunfels? Texas? I know. Isn't that the truth? What? Okay. So the child was taken, she had bacteria in her urine, so they took her to Oak Run. She continued to have issues. She was taken on July the 2nd to a place called Little Spurs. They gave her a round of antibiotics for her vaginitis and what they considered to be a yeast infection. She went on visitation with mom on the 10th, 11th and 12th of July. She came back from mom's visitation on July the 16th, or from mom's visitation on the 12th, and she was taken back to Little Spurs on the 16th. On the 16th, she continued to have pain or she continued to have issues where she couldn't even sit down. And they gave her another round of antibiotics, I believe. And then on the 25th, she was taken to Dell Children's Hospital or Dell Children's uh, facility. So she was taken to three different places, Little Spurs, Oak Run and Dell Children's. And I want the court to be aware that the reason that that happened was that the child refused to be seen by a, a male physician. Thank you. Sure. Sorry, Your Honor, this um, is where We'll probably need a very extensive hearing. Dr. Morgan, who was one of the doctors that dad took her to, gave, gave very interesting testimony um, regarding the threats from the father that she felt. I, and this is where I feel like, Your Honor, we really need a, a long evidentiary hearing to hear all of these issues. Agreed. Um, I agree with that as well. You will, you will absolutely get that. I don't know exactly what the date will be. Um, I'm going to have to 
consult my calendar because this really does need some time. There were more places in addition. There was a, an urgent care in Temple, Texas that Michael Long's wife took the child to. And I believe Rachel Lee in her motion also addressed that and that's where we would be able to have some testimony with regards to that. Do you have the date on that urgent care in Temple so that we all have that as well? Mr. Long is wanting to answer, but that's okay. No, um, Ms. Shemesh, do you have the date? I'm looking right now. Okay. Because my information is that Dr. Morgan never had any interaction with Mr. Long at all. So, I mean, I, we can have this at a hearing. I'm, I'm sure that we'll have to get out the testimony and before the court, obviously. But I'm just Your asking Honor, for the date. I'm just asking for the date of urgent care. Can Mr. Long respond to that, Your Honor? Mr. Long, you can respond through your lawyer. So text her or I, I just think it's best not to take any evidence sure. at all because no one is sworn. I completely agree with that, Judge. Thank you. It's hard to text and be on a Zoom hearing. So um, we'll just wait for Ms. Shemesh because I've tried Sorry. that. It's an yeah. extensive case, Your Honor. I'm, I'm digging through right now. Of course. Honor, as long as we're waiting for that date and, and nobody has come up with the date, is um, can we get some inclination as to when the court's inclined to have this um, additional temporary orders hearing? No, we can't do that because I'll have to switch to my calendar, which might knock us off soon. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. I get it. I get it. I appreciate it. The logistics of this whole pandemic have been yeah. wild for me. I know. I yeah. Now that the whole world knows my age, I'm old and I have had to really come up with some serious technology. Right. Your Honor, I'm still looking, but I, if I recall correctly, it was August 18th. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, is that the other... The other one that you wanted to add, Ms. Shemesh, is that? Yes, Your Honor. And I believe I believe that there were more and CPS would be able to testify with regards to that and along with my client. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, it is not in any child's best interest not to be taken to the doctor if they should fall ill during a visit so um, the injunction with respect to father taking it, any parent, mother or father, taking the child to a doctor, um, to me is fraught with danger. Uh, so what I will say though is obviously, um, well, it'll be more obvious with the second. The second injunction was related to not taking children for additional um, 
forensic style interviews. Um, there are actually law enforcement officers that give talks to judges and they say it's not good for the, their case. That is, it's not, um, doesn't make the prosecution any easier by taking the child to multiple places. Although I understand that if you as a parent felt your child wasn't being heard, then you would be inclined to do that. I don't see that as uh, nefarious, um, but I, I will say that that injunction will remain in place. So um, no additional forensic style interviews um, other than the Collin County CAC. May I get a clarification on that, Judge? Because it's it's my understanding that the amicus attorney did herself engage in what would be kind of a forensic interview of this child. And if we appoint a new amicus, that would lead to a, another interview. I'm just trying to let, you know get a little clarification on the amicus. If you appoint somebody else, are they permitted to, to talk to the child and essentially conduct their own forensic interview? And if that's the case, I would I would have to ask for somebody who's actually qualified to be able to do that, who has the training and the experience and the credentials to know how to do that in an appropriate way. Right. Um, I can't speak to any of that yet. I have not had that in my, you know, any evidentiary hearing as far as what took place prior. I have not appointed a new amicus and I don't know at this point. I mean, the party's resources are going to be spent on getting psychological evaluations for the parents, as well as counseling for all three children post haste. So these therapeutic interventions must be done and must be done quickly. We need healthy, emotional folks to take care of their children and co-parent them until the age of 18. So, um, Keeping children safe is not just uh, whether or not one person or the other is guilty of a crime. There are so many other layers of collateral type safety that have to be addressed by both parents going forward um, and the trauma of just the court case that the children will necessarily be suffering from. So, let it be known that the resources of this family should be focused not on um, not first on a court battle, but first and foremost on every person in this family that is not together anymore getting the help they need. But first and foremost, all three children um, are suffering. No question about that. And I will, um, I guess what we'll have to do is get with the court's um, coordinator. Again, I will live stream on YouTube every future hearing and interaction. This is the first weekend of the month, and it seems to be an appropriate weekend for an exchange. Um, and again, I want strict orders on both parents that there will be no interactions of disparagement, no interactions of um, name calling or any type of anything between these two. Obviously, they're involved in a very, um, what can I say, acrimonious relationship at this point. But that does not have to, that happens all the time in a lot of family law cases. People do not like each other, but they do not divorce their children. So both parents at this exchange need to be with smiles on their faces, not having, you know, stress related reactions in front of their children. It's, you know, it's about maturity. It's about keeping your own emotions in check so that the children are not disturbed. Um, no matter how much you may dislike each other at this point, it really doesn't matter. You don't divorce your children and you have to co-parent for the rest of their lives. So as long as both sides are keeping their kids safe, both emotionally and physically, with proper restrictions in place, there is no 
need to keep either parent from their children and more importantly, these children from their parents. It's their rights we're talking about. It's these three children's rights we're talking about here. Um, let me check in here to see if I have anything else I wanna let you guys know. Have, has the court um, had any kind of, um, we, we talked about maybe having a neutral ex exchange location that might kind of maybe reduce the amount of acrimony that's uh, that's between the parties. Has the court had any kind of, have y'all con considered that at all? I heard through the grapevine that they were doing it in Waco at their police st station. I don't know that to be true because again, that was a prior record, another. Sure. Uh, Your Honor, I can clarify the court's previous place was Frisco PD. Before that, it was Waco at a Starbucks. Um, I, was the I, final I, order? what was the last order was a Waco Starbucks let's let's not do that let's do the Waco PD that that might be helpful both both parents and and your honor because I know this is live streamed and I know that there have been safety concerns and threats being made if we could if the attorneys could counsel with regards to getting an agreed upon location I don't think that that would be an issue I agree with you um I I will just urge both sides, there's a lot that um, feeling helpless led to, um, which I do not judge. I just want everyone to know that. I do not judge a parent feeling helpless and doing what they know to do. What I will also say is it is not in any child's best interest to have either parent threatened with death threats, any harm. Um, at, at the least of all of this, it could be happen in front of your three beloved children. So let's all do our best to try to, it's, it's out of your hands now. I realize no one has control over the internet at this point. So believe me, I am not focused on that. I am focused on safety um, because I will not be deterred. These children need to be safe, and that's from any layer of violence or threat of violence. And so what we agree to, and I think I have both parents nodding, they don't want anything bad to happen, and not the least of which in front of their children. So let's all be very, very safe with each other, though we do not like each other. That is not the issue here. We only love our children. They are our first concern. And so that helplessness led to a bunch of internet interaction. I am, again, not judging that. So let it be known that um, it's gotten beyond the control of the parties and that is okay. There's nothing we can do except from here on out, let's do our level best, everyone, to ensure the safety of both parents and the um, children in this case. And of course, the attorneys as well um, as anyone you know connected to the case, because the best thing for all of us is that these three children are safe. They're to all of our benefit. Okay, so this weekend is a long weekend, so I'm going to order the extra day be dad's extra day. So the return of the children with the Waco in mind should be on the, um, well, gosh, I don't know actually my dates right now. I believe the seventh is the day off from school. That's correct. Is that right, guys? Yes. All right. So um, would that be in, in keeping with the other order? I have no idea what it said. Uh, we would be a Friday at noon exchange. Is that what's been happening? No. Okay. We can't get to Waco by noon. Okay. So what time was the typical? I believe it was 5 p.m. Fridays okay. at 5 to, to Sundays at 5, but and we're going to. Your Honor, know. in terms of the typical order, I think that's where we absolutely need a hearing. He wasn't adhering to that typical order where he was getting one weekend every month. And so that's where I would I urge the court that the court needs to hear testimony with regards to everything. 
Your Honor, I would, I, I think that that mon Monday at five o'clock would be appropriate. This, this father needs to have some eyes on these children considering what's happened in the last 10 days. I, I can't imagine not being able to see the kids or talk to the kids or have visitation with the kids at this point, given all the, given all, all of what has been happening and transpiring in this case. I do agree with Mr. Mesh that we should have a hearing. I do agree with that. And I think we should have a full evidentiary hearing. Do I agree. believe- Okay, thank you. And Ms. Graham, I do wanna correct your um, slight misunderstanding because it preceded your presence in the case. Sure. The original order was signed by me and it was giving dad full custody and mom zero. So, okay. Well, thank you for that correction, your honor. I let, had no let's idea. be clear. Let's okay, be clear. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you. Um, and prior to that, my understanding was that the parties were uh, giving this, this full year school year notice of which weekend it would be so that seems to me to be very loose as to be not even enforceable so that needs to change for sure going forward and um that was agreed to in the msa and put into a final order three years later in 2020. so absolutely we'll do a full evidentiary hearing every both sides need to get their pleadings straightened out too and Your Honor, if I may, just for the record, I'd, I'd like to state my my objection to modification of any order without a hearing. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to let the record know that I, I would object to Your Honor modifying any order at this time without actually having a hearing on the issue. And what order are you specifically referring to? to the, the previous order of the party, Your Honor, from July of 2020, in which that order specifically states that father would have to have given notice for the dates that he would have had possession of the children. Um, my interpretation, I believe opposing counsel's interpretation too, as they stated earlier, was that father would not be having any possession until the 16th. My understanding is that, Your Honor, we could reset this case because the other side, Michael's side, has requested a continuance to allow them to catch up with everything and possibly to allow the court or anybody else ability to catch up with that. Reset it for a date soon enough to where we're not denying father and the children you know, being in danger, but father would be able to actually view the children as your honor already put in her memorandum by Zoom. Okay, thank you. The court still modifies the extent of modification of the 2020 July 7 order the extent of the modification is the lack of notice to mom. And that was to be had prior to the school year, which was, I guess, August 20th. That is the only modification of this court. What was the date of school? What was the date of notice that was supposed to be given? Two weeks prior to the start of school, Your Honor. Okay. So August, early August, Notification was not given by Mr. Long, which his lawyers have conceded that he did not give that notice in early August. He had possession of the children at that time under a TRO. So the court is modifying the lack of notice only and adhering to the SPO of families living over 100 miles apart. We are now in recess. My court and I will discuss the future hearing. You attorneys will discuss the exchange place and keep that confidential. Uh, the hearing itself will be live streamed and therefore I will um, let the parties know by uh, the usual methods. Understood, Your Honor. And, and just for the record only, um, for appeal purposes, I just want to, to make sure